while we're still in this line of thinking about neo-orthodoxy, okay, we know there is the logos, okay? There is the written word that is propositional, right? Do you not have those propositions of God's word laying there in front of you? Mm -hmm. That's the written word of God. But then there is also the living Word of God, who is, by the way, personal. In fact, we can go a little further than that and say that the living Word is a person and that that person, the living Word of God, is who? Jesus. Jesus. Jesus Christ. Now, Scott, give me, I ask you to open up to where the 63 and the 2000 Baptist Faith and Message. Yeah. Read the 2000 first in regard to, to Scripture. The Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and as God's revelation of himself to man. Okay, is that what we just said in this course tonight? That Scripture is God's revelation of himself to man. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. It is a perfect treasure of divine instruction. It has for God, it has God for its author, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter. Man, that's that's a good statement Ooh. right there. That's something worthy of memorization. Scripture has God as its author, salvation as its end, and truth without any mixture of error for its matter. That's worthy of memorization. Go ahead, brother. Therefore, all Scripture is totally true and trustworthy. It reveals the principles by which God judges us and therefore is and will remain to the end of the world the true center of Christian union and the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creeds, and religious opinions should be tried. All scripture is a testimony to Christ who is himself the focus of divine revelation. So Jesus is the living word, right? That's what they're saying. But all the ideas, all the creeds, all the things of human history, all the religious ideas, what did it say there? Are subject mm. to the written word. To the written word, to the propositional, right? <clears throat> now that's where Southern Baptists got to in 2000. Listen to where Southern Baptists were in 63. The Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and is the record of God's revelation of Himself. Oh, to man. wait a minute. Now, did y'all catch that? The 2000 said that God's Word is revelation. Okay, now wait a minute. Read it again, brother. The Holy Bible was written by men divinely inspired and is the record of God's revelation of Himself to man. Oh, there it is. The record not mean more of a history? Yeah, exactly. So, God's Word, according to our own document in 63, we did not say that there was a trustworthy, authoritative, and errant Word of God. We didn't say that. We said that God's Word was a record of revelation. Not revelation itself. Right. So you see how the 63 statement was lending itself mm. towards this idea of neo orthodoxy? That's why there was a reformation in some of the things that we had written. We said, we got to change this. It can't stay like it is anymore. Go ahead and read the rest up there, Scott. Uh, it is a perfect treasure of divine instruction. It has God for its author, salvation for its end, and truth without any mixture of error. For its matter, mm -hmm. it reveals the principles by which God judges us and therefore is and will remain to the end of the world the true center of Christian union and the supreme standard by which all human conduct, creeds, and religious opinions should be tried. Now, a lot of that language is the same, right? Mm -hmm. But now listen to the next statement here. The criterion by which the Bible is to be interpreted is Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. So now what are we saying then? The criterion, that was a statement that was amended mm -hmm. in the 2000. Read that statement again, Scott. In the, two, the criterion one? Mm -hmm. The criterion by which the Bible is to be interpreted is Jesus Christ. Okay. Okay. And we would agree with that. I, don't, I mean, I don't think that we would disagree with that. The only problem is when you couple that statement with what we have right here, what you're saying is in what people have said, liberal and moderate theologians for a number of years 
is that God's word, the written word, is not an it's not a propositional revelation. And so as a result of that, it's just a record mm, revelation. of revelation. And Jesus Christ is the sole criterion by which all that information is to be judged. So then, basically, Jesus encounters me through His Word and then through that encounter tells me what His Word means. But here's the problem. Here is, this is classic neo-orthodoxy. And the reason I'm telling you all about this stuff is because this stuff still exists. Neo-orthodoxy would tend to elevate the living word above the written word. I encounter God through His word. I'm not so concerned with what this says. Paul says, um, you know, that a man is to be a husband of one wife. He's to be above reproach. He's to have his house in order, whatever it may be. Uh, and what he said about women and their office and their position in the church, you know, those types of things. What they're going to say is, yeah, you know what, that's a part of the written word, but I'm not bound to that anymore. Hmm. My encounter is with the living word, Jesus Christ. And whatever the living word says, that's what I'm going to live by. Here's the rub. What happens when what the living word has told you is different from what the living word has told me? Mm -hmm. yeah. Or just when it's different than the written word altogether. Exactly. Yeah. So here's the thing, guys. Neo Orthodoxy wants to say that the living word is far superior to the written word. Mm -hmm. And really, that I'm not even really bound to the precepts of the written word. Mm -hmm. Here's the problem What do we know of the living word? apart from the, written, from the written word. What we feel. Here's the deal. It's our ideas. If we can't know what the written word says, if we can't know what it means, well, we've got big problems, mm -hmm. don't we? If we can't know what the written word means and says, if it's not authoritative in what it declares to be true, how can we know what the written word has said about the living word is accurate? Mm -hmm. How can we know that the living word is who he says he is? <coughs> if we can't discern this word here. Mm -hmm. So attempts to try and somehow subvert the written word to the living word really aren't productive. Yes, the living word is the most complete revelation of God to mankind, but that's by no means to suggest that the written word is going to be contradictory to the living word because this written word is the word of God. Mm -hmm. It was inspired of the Holy Spirit of God, mm -hmm. sent to us by Christ, guiding us now into all truth. So where we don't want to end up, guys, we don't want to end up saying, you know what, it's all about the living word and the written word doesn't mean that much to me. Well, you got you got problems because what do you know about the living word were it not for the written word? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's the trouble.